Fine Music Breakfast with Annabelle Drum. I hope you're enjoying yourself this morning. The time is six minutes past eight o'clock. Here at Fine Music Breakfast, I'm Annabel Drum. And the weather at the moment, it's 18 degrees in Sydney and 16 degrees in Penrith. And we're looking for an overall high of 28 degrees. It'll be mostly sunny today, maybe a little bit of fog still out there in the west and slight chance of a shower uh, at night time with some gusty winds this afternoon to pick you up and get you moving. <laughs> now, this morning in the studio, I've got a German musician who studied at The Hague in the Royal Conservatorium, and he's well-established here in Australia now. He's performed with the Australian Opera and Ballet Orchestra. He was a founding member of the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra, founding member and musical director of the Melbourne Collegium Baroque Orchestra, and recorded solo works with the ABC. I'd like to welcome Hans-Dieter Mikas. Good morning. Thanks Good for having morning. me. Good morning. I'm so pleased to have you here. Now, you've um, you've certainly built a great network of musical connections here in Australia. How long have you been here now? I've been here oh, for longer than I care to remember sometimes, uh, since 1983. Oh, you're, you're even off, more a resident than me. <laughs> probably, yes. Um, yeah, I started off in, in Melbourne and then came to Sydney in 1990. Mm-hmm. Lovely. And uh, you're enjoying Sydney? I suppose the weather's a bit different, isn't I it? I love it, history. yes. Well, I go back once a year to Europe and this year was January, so I got a bit of winter and I thought it's nice to come back anyway. <laughs> Get back into the warm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, you've certainly very, been very busy in the education area as yes, well, mainly, yeah. and, as well as performing mm-hmm. and conducting. You've taught in various universities, been a lecturer yeah. for AIM. Yeah. And um, the UWA, International Baroque Summer School. What's UWA? Uh, uh, University of Western Australia. Oh, right. They used to have a summer school for a few years running, and uh, that was very much first generation stuff that we did there. Um, yeah, and then, you know, from there on, I started having classes at the conservatorium here as well. In Sydney? In Sydney, yes. And you, you were editor for some books as well for the Australian Music Examinations oh, That's board. a long time ago. They have long been superseded. But yes, I did the first first flute books for the uh, AMEB. It was a, g- a great joy because... I worked with wonderful colleagues on those books, so there was a real pedagogical sense of, of achievement behind them. Mm, do you, you, so you find? Do, do you like to teach the more master classes or the, the basic classes? I basically <laughs> teach really everything. I just so enjoy working with people. You know, if they are young or older or amateurs or pro- professionals, doesn't matter. There's such a joy and a thrill in all of that. Because it's not just about technique, is it? Do you go no, beyond no. that? Yeah, I think you know very much. The, uh, today, you really have to teach everything that goes with music because it's an art form and I very much adhere to the old humanist idea that uh, you know music is part of uh, the overall being really mm. I mean it used to be one of the main subjects to be taught along with things like rhetoric and math and Right. You know, yes, it should be with there with everybody. I think. Yes, I think. Yeah, if you want to do music properly, it's all encompassing, really. Mm. So I think that's an important point which we often forget in music education. I think we do. Yes, yes. I, I did for some years some um, teaching of recorder in, in primary oh, schools, yeah. mm-hmm. and found I really wanted to push that it was make it as much fun as possible, rather than really being hard on the technique. Well, you have and to do, do a bit of both, really. I'm yeah. just back from New South Wales music uh, recorder camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, four days of very intense work with with uh, uh, state school students uh, of all ages, really, from you know year four to HSC. Right, and it's amazing what they can achieve if you guide them properly. So I can actually go from really easy demands to totally professional ones, and they will respond. Right, and and bringing so, in the passion for the music at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's all a matter of focus and dedication, really. Yes. I, I think that sort of spurs them on to learn more, doesn't it? Yeah, I tend to, to raise the bar high and see how far they can go because if you if you tread too softly, you very often just make them lose interest. Mm-hmm. You know? So you always have to say there's more out there, mm. look at it and go for it. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Now tell me more about these lovely recorders you mentioned. <laughs> I, I, I was fascinated by this, the longest one, this huge, huge one, the walking stick The walking recorder. stick, yes. Okay, this is How my, long is that now? Uh, 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 I don't know. It's mm, over a metre, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Just the right amount to put just on the, the floor. Right. <laughs> Very elegant. Something. It's called the Chakan, um, and it's, it was around in the um, late classical, early romantic times in Vienna mainly. So Chakan says it comes from, from Hungary originally. Um, how's that? How's that spelled? 
Uh, it's uh, C S A K A N. Ah, okay. Yeah. C S. There you go. That's the. <laughs> yeah, cha. cha. Now we know. Um, and uh, uh, it was a kind of uh, uh, not really professional instrument, but a lot of people played it, and of course, it went together with the idea of enjoying the outside more, going for a walk, playing music. Sit under a tree and have it right. and play. It is rumored that Beethoven had one of these. Oh, really? So, <laughs> you never know. He was deaf, so. <laughs> That, that anyway, makes it a little tricky, doesn't it? So um, uh, it was used to actually play uh, easy kind of arrangements of uh, well-known pieces. There's lots of opera arrangements for it. I've just recorded some uh, Mozart magic flute arrangements, you know. Um, so oh, on, it's, on this one here? Yeah, it's a curiosity, okay. really, more than a very, very serious instrument. And how do you stop the dirt getting in the end? Well, there's a, there's a plug <laughs> <laughs> of various, various <laughs> Take it out or it doesn't play very yeah, well. You don't have to take it out even. I mean, oh. most of the length is not playing length or sounding length. No, I was wondering because there were holes all the way down. That's right, yeah. So the, the normal the normal length is actually half that and you, you can basically uh, stop it there. So. Oh, I see. I but, see. yeah, it's a, it's a very nice instrument and ma many people, or not many people, play it in Australia. No, in I've fact, never seen one In fact, maybe I'm before. the only one to this date. And I've played it overseas recently where it has been a bit of a, a fad. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the music for it often tends to be quite virtuosic, so it's quite impressive. Mm, good, tricky stuff. So hold no, your breath, impressive. the recording's coming. <laughs> and this beautiful, this is a bass here, right? No, this is a tenor. It's, a a, tenor. it's modelled on a Baroque original uh, by uh, the French maker Otterterre. Um, the wood is extraordinary. Yeah, beautiful. it's a bit of a fake because it's really box wood <laughs> that has been stained beautifully, <laughs> as they used to do. But is a Does beautiful. Does it sound good though? It sounds fantastic, mm. and it's a beautiful instrument for me because I used to be a flute player and I had to give that up for various reasons, and now I replace you know the flute repertoire a little bit with these. Uh, fantastic recorders that actually can represent the flute repertoire as well. Mm, it's really stunning. So Beautiful. that's the one I'll be playing on Sunday. That's in the I'll concert. Yes. All right, we'll hear a little more about the concert yeah. soon. And this a little And this is discount. a desk hand yeah. um, that's actually uh, by an Australian maker, Joanne Saunders, mm. um, modelled on, uh, on an early uh, original. And, uh, the mouthpiece is quite narrow, isn't it? Yeah, I know that they are very narrow yeah. uh, when they are Some of them are quite the wide. So what's the difference yeah. there? Yeah, oh, look, uh, it's... On the wider ones, they often look wide because the makers keep a lot of wood there. And you can see that stubby. here there's a very thin uh, yes. wood layer around the actual wind channel. And that's the same if you look for the size on, 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 the, on the tenor as the well. Tenor. It's quite small. Right. That's just for convenience and also the wind channel. The longer, the more stable the, the air that goes through it. So uh, the ancient makers knew what they were doing and we're still finding out. Yes. Very exciting. Yeah, so they're not really experimenting a lot? They're not finding they can make a better sound? No, they do. They do. I worked with a flute maker in my time who, you know, just used to send you away and, and while he was trying something and then you come back and you try the instrument again and he listens and then he does something else. So they, they try to find out how to the slightest detail and sometimes the tolerances are by like a hundredth of a millimeter mm. uh, to improve the response at sound of the instrument. And you'll be playing that discount as well in the yes, concert? Yes, because we are playing some Irish and Scots, uh, Scottish tunes which, you know, need a bit of lively, li livening up, as it were. Yes. Um, and the higher instruments, of course, give quite a jolly character to that. They do, so, don't they? Yes. That's lovely. Now, how did you end up working with Sydney Consort? Good question. Um, I guess we met at one stage and then decided we should play together. Mm -hmm. And this was, you know, a very long time ago. I don't even know when we did the very, very first concert together, but early 2000s, I would say. And it's just been an absolute joy to work with Stan and Monica Cornell um, because they're such consummate musicians and real characters to, to boot, really. So uh, we have toured together and it's always... And you've toured all sorts of places, up to the Baltic area and Scandinavia. Yes, and Finland and uh, mm. down to Luxembourg and in Germany and uh, through Poland, which for me was a beautiful experience to actually, for the first time, go to Poland. And What was and special about Poland? Oh, well, you know, it's got a, a, a real history. And as a German, you are kind of part of that, if you like it or not. 
Um, but to see the beauty of it and see the old buildings and, uh, uh, you know, the old ports. We went to Gdansk and played a concert there. Yeah, it was just, for me, it was a real kind of l lack that I could finally uh, feel in my education. Mm. Um, and just people there were just amazingly uh, happy and outgoing and, and, and warm and welcoming. So it was a really good experience for all of us. I also learned to drive recklessly. <laughs> as so like everybody else in Bolin? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, uh, that you have to keep up with the, with the locals, do you? That's correct, yes. Uh, I see. <laughs> well, the, the Sydney Consort is who you'll be playing with on Sunday. Correct. yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the programme and what the you'll be playing. The is actually uh, a bit of a, a mixture. This is uh, put together from uh, a couple of concerts that we played in the Conandra Baroque Festival recently. Uh, one was dedicated to Bach and his sons, and the other one was uh, Irish and Scottish folk, or not folk music, Baroque music. I say folk because their m music is always modelled on folk models, no matter if they are uh, serious music or, or just plain dance music. So... Um, uh, this program mixes the two up in the space of an hour, which is the requirement of um, uh, of the concert society. Blue Mountains. Mm. Blue Mountains. Um, so we have uh, the the um, absolute culmination of Bach's uh, uh, musical output, which is the musical offering, which is based on that famous royal theme that Frederick the Great is supposed to have or rumoured to have given to Bach to work with. And we are playing, uh, Monica is playing the, the three-part Richard Carr on the harpsichord, which is a beautiful composition. And then we are doing the final two pieces of the collection, which is the Trio Sonata. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Canon Perpetuus, which is really a, a glorification of Frederick the Great and his eternal power, basically. Mm. So that's a bracket in itself. And then we play uh, at a Trio Sonata by Wilhelm Friedemann Bach, one of the oldest sons of Bach in which uh, Stan will play his viola d'amore, which is a very special instrument. Um, what makes it special? It's uh, hardly ever played. Bach wrote, wrote a few pieces for it, notably in his uh, St. John Passion. It's a, a viola with six to seven strings uh, and actually complementary strings that, that sound but can't be tuned as far as uh, 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 fingerboard tuning. Mm. Um, and they're just resonating strings. So it's a fantastically sounding instrument and it's called Viola d'Amore because it's got a really loving, beautiful, warm sound. Not very big, but uh, very flexible and, and goes really beautifully with the recorder. So. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Yes, and Stan is a real virtuoso on this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's something to look forward to. Sounds like a great program. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the piece that you've given me to play this morning? Uh, the piece uh, uh, is a, a Bach uh, uh, a trio sonata, which is an arrangement of one of his organ trio sonatas. Mm -hmm. uh, they are jewels in their own right because, of course, Bach was in his time principally known as an organist. Right. Um, these organ trios and others are really the height of the repertoire. So there's lots of arrangements for them. Right. And we have done one uh, uh, for violin, and at the time I was still playing flute and obligato harpsichord, basically. Okay. And I think we thought we'd play some more animated movements this morning because yes, we are still little waking up. That's it. <laughs> we'll wake ourselves up uh, with these two little it. pieces. Let's have a listen mm -hmm. to the Bach's. It's from organ, his organ trio. Is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. From Gee. Sydney Consort performing. That's right. yeah. Beautiful piece by Johann Sebastian Bach and played by the Sydney Consort and my guest here in the studio, Hans Dieter Mikast. 
Um, that must be such a joy to play when you're, when you're playing it live. It is, yes. I mean, it's a bit risky as well, as you can hear. There's a lot, a lot to do in those pieces. But Bach writes such beautiful counterpoint and imitation. And all that. So there's always something going on between the players as well. You never play it the same twice. Um, do you feel kind of skittish when you're, when you're playing it, a bit playful? Um, yes, in a very positive kind of way, uh, in that you feed off each other, but you don't want to be trivial in the, in the way that you communicate the music. So, uh, yes, in, within reason, you can do a lot of things with that. I'm, I'm a little bit conservative. In that Are way. you? Yes. With Bach, make sure you keep it, keep it running. Uh, yes, I mean, there's a lot in that music. Uh, if you overinterpret, um, you, you basically dictate to the listener what they should be hearing, which uh, at Bach's time was the main criticism of his music anyway, because people said, oh, the guy writes everything in, every ornament, everything that's normally done by the performer. Um, so he's a little bit pedantic like that, and therefore we bit don't like his freak. music. A yeah, bit, little bit like mm -hmm. that. So you don't want to go too far in terms of taking that even further. Right. But, uh, right. Yes, to to a large degree, of course, one should always feel that the performers are joyful in performing that music. Now, so it's going to be up at the Blue Mountains um, Theatre on yes. Macquarie Road in Springwood. This is on Sunday afternoon at 2.30. 2 very good time for families to maybe come along. And it's an hour, roughly an hour long, so Perfect it's for not kids. overkill. Perfect for kids. Yeah, yes. that's right. Or people who want to be introduced to classical music mm -hmm. is a great start. Yes. You know, so. Drag along all your friends. The tickets are from $25. And we have five double passes, is that right? That's I think. fantastic, yes. <gasps> wow, mm. five double passes to give away. So give me a call here at the station at 94394777 and say that you're interested in going to the Blue Mountains concert on Sunday afternoon. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day, I can tell already. It's a perfect trip, isn't it, to drive up to Yeah, I'm looking Blue forward to it already, yes. <laughs> you're <laughs> yes, getting yourself ready to go. That's right. Uh, drive on up and have a fantastic concert in the afternoon and maybe a picnic lunch before that would be beautiful. I think that's going to be a wonderful concert in the weekend. It should be. We are planning to enjoy it a lot. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much for coming in. This was Hans-Dieter Mikatz, and he'll be working with Sydney Consort at the Blue Mountains Theatre. You'll find more information on our website, or you can go and buy your tickets on theirs, which is BM, so Blue Mountains, bmconcerts.com. Thank you so much for coming in, Hans. Pleasure. Thank you.